We have finally arrived at the final sew along of 2022 and we're making another beautiful Christmas theme design, the festive foliage window hanger. In this video I will show you the stitch out of block one, the Christmas roses and the construction of the hanger. We recommend that you follow our photograph written instructions in conjunction with this video tutorial. And if you didn't know, you can receive a 30% discount code on this design if you join our December Sew Along Facebook group. I'll leave a link for that in the description below. And remember to post the photos of your wonderful hangers to enter the monthly draw where we give away lots of prizes for our favorite designs. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe. Block one, Christmas roses. Begin by hooping up cutaway stabilizer in the hoop and load the design onto your machine. Use applique scissors for trimming the batting and fabric. Now place batting one on top of the hoop and stitch the batting down. Then remove the hoop from your machine and trim the batting about one to two millimeters from the stitching and stitch the place and line for the background. Place fabric A right side up on top of the hoop covering the place and line and stitch down. Remove the hoop from your machine and trim the fabric about 1 to 2 millimeters from the stitching. Using the top edge of fabric A as a place and line, place one piece of fabric B wrong side up on top of the hoop crossing the place and line by a quarter inch with the excess fabric towards the bottom of the hoop and stitch down. Fold over the fabric, hold taut and stitch down. Remove the hoop from your machine and trim the fabric about 1 to 2 millimeters from the stitching, leaving the excess fabric in the seam. Embroider the stems. Repeat the flip and fold process with the bottom border using the other piece of fabric B. Trim, leaving the excess fabric in the seam. Repeat the flip and fold process for the border using one piece of fabric C. Do not trim. Repeat the flip and fold process for the right border using the other piece of fabric C. Do not trim. Embroider the branches in the background, then embroider the berries. Repeat the applique process for the leaves using small pieces of fabric and trim. Embroider the vein on the leaves and the satin stitch around the leaves. Repeat the applique process for the right flower using fabric D. Trim. Embroider the detailing on the right flower. Then embroider the pollen on the right flower. Embroider the satin stitch around the right flower.
Repeat the applique process for the left flower using fabric -E trim. Embroider the detailing on the left flower. Then embroider the shading in the center of the flower. Embroider the sun stitch around the left flower. And then embroider the pollen on the left flower. And we have now completed the stitch out of block one. Well done. Remove from the hoop and trim the seams about half an inch using your rotary cutter and ruler. Hold the side until all your blocks are made. Now I'll show you how to join the blocks. First lay out your completed blocks on a flat surface and start off by joining the blocks in rows. Place the first two blocks right sides together and pin along one edge lining up the border stitching the best you can. Take your time with this process. Then stitch the side seam on your sewing machine. Stitch just inside the border already stitched on the blocks so the stitching will not be seen on the right side later. Open out the stitch seams and iron flat. Then continue this until you have each horizontal row of blocks joined. Next, join the horizontal rows to each other by placing the first two rows right sides together. Pin along the bottom edge matching up the border seams the best you can. We like to pin the corners and the joins of the blocks. Take your time with this process. Then stitch the seam on your sewing machine. Stitch just inside the border already stitched on the blocks so the stitching will not be seen on the right sides later. Open out the stitch seams and iron flat. Continue this until you have joined all the horizontal rows. If needed, trim the edges to make them even with your rotary cutter and ruler. Now to attach the flat piping and borders to your project. Just a quick reminder, the flat piping is optional. Measure the join blocks, allowing for an inch overlapping each side of the blocks and cut your fabric. Cut two one and a quarter inch strips, fabric F, for the flat piping on the sides. Note, the flat piping strips should not have any joins in them as this will cause them to look uneven when finished. Press the strips of flat fabric for the piping in half width ways, ensuring the raw edges are sitting exactly on top of each other. Then lay a flat piping strip right side up on top of the side edge of the join blocks with the folded edge pointing towards the center of the background fabric. Pin or quilt clip together and stitch into place with a quarter inch 6mm seam.
Repeat for the other long edge of your hanger or runner. The edges of the flat piping will overlap the ends and trim. Repeat the process for the remaining short ends, Fabric G. And this is how to add the borders. If you would like borders, first decide how you would like them. We made our 7 cm, 2.5 inches wide. Then measure the length of your runner. Cut two strips of border fabric the length you just measured, fabric H, then cut two pieces of batting two to match. Secure the batting to the border fabric by lightly spraying temporary adhesive to the batting and lay your fabric right side up on the batting. Place the border fabric on top of the runner with the attached batting right sides together, pin or clip together. Stitch together with a half inch seam, pinning and stitching on the wrong side of the hanger or runner means you can make sure you are stitching inside the borderline on the front of the hanger or runner. This will ensure this line of stitching will not show on the front. Then trim back the batting from the seam allowance to reduce any seam bulk. Fold over and press the side border down neatly. Optional, top stitch the border for a neat, flat finish. If needed, trim the borders to make them even. Now measure one of the side edges without a border, including the new border width in your measurement. Cut two strips of border fabric the length you just measured, fabric I, then cut two pieces of batting three to match. Repeat the temporary adhesive spray steps that we did for the first two borders.
Place the border fabric with the attached batting on top of the runner, right sides together. Pin or clip and stitch a half inch seam from the edge. Trim back the batting from the seam allowance and repeat for the opposite border. Fold over and iron the side border down neatly. Optional, top stitch the border for a neat, flat finish. If needed, trim the borders to make them even. If you opted to make a hanger for this project, I will now show you how to add the loops for hanging. Take out Fabric J for the loops, fold the two longer edges widthways and sew a small 2cm, 3 4 of an inch seam to create a tube. Open the seam and then using the tip of the iron, press the seam open. Turn the loop through to the right side and press flat, leaving the joining seam in the middle on the underside of the loop. Edge stitch or top stitch if desired. Fold in half lengthways and iron and clip to secure. Machine baste the edges together. Repeat for the other side to make it look even and make sure the bobbin is the same color as your top thread. Also make sure the loops are even and trim them to the desired length. Pin them both to your hanger. We decided to place the loops two and a half inches from the border stitching of the hanger. This will depend on the type of hanger you're using. Stay stitch in place.
Great. Let's cut the backing. Place Fabricade backing on your table, right sides facing up. Place your sewn hanger or runner on top of the Fabricade right sides together. Pin in place, leaving an opening of about 6 inches, 15 centimeters for turning. Stitch a quarter inch seam, remembering to leave the opening. Trim the seams to a quarter inch and half inch where the opening is, so it is easy to hand stitch it closed later. Clip the corners for more pointed ones when turned. Turn the right way out through the opening using a chopstick or pointy thing to help push out the corners. Press to the iron and hand stitch or use fabric glue the opening closed. Then stitch in the ditch all of the seams to attach the backing. Again, make sure your bobbin matches your backing fabric. And there we have it, your wall hanger or runner is now complete. Enjoy.
Well, friends, that's the end of the tutorial video. I hope you love your new festive foliage window hanger or runner. If you want to find other beautiful designs like this one, shop at sweepea.com. That is S-W-P-E-A.com. That's all from me, and I would like to wish you a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year.